Okay, let's have a look at what's inside a typical set and the options during a setup. Here we have the set. Voila. Yes, of course we have the manuals. We'll study them later on. The package includes the transmitter over here and the receiver over here. Of course, it has a set of entry-level in-ears, the IE4. Next, we have the antenna and the power adapter with options for every power plug on Earth. And here is a mounting set for racks. Great. Let's start with the receiver. It's pretty light. Battery and settings panels are secured and you need to press both buttons here to open it. You can't accidentally open it mid-set. This is safe for all those sweaty sessions. Okay, we can start with these AA batteries. They work for up to six hours. You might want to switch to rechargeables later on as it'll save you money in the long run. See, on the back, we have a rugged clamp to get this body pack safely on our belt or wherever. And the most basic view we'll have on stage or during rehearsal is this, bottom down. We turn it on with the volume knob. Hello. The lights will blink while it's connecting to the base. Green is good. Everything else is bad. Red blinking warns when the battery goes low and a red light shows no link. Bang on, as we haven't synced it with our transmitter yet. And here we have our headphone jack output. Your XS wireless IEM set works in the professional UHF range. It comes pre-configured for the available frequency range in your country, and it's easy to set up with a wide range of presets to choose from. All things to set up are here on the front. We can access a basic setup menu, Pressing set activates the menu. I could choose a frequency bank here. Okay. And with another push, I can choose a channel. Another push leads to the limiter option, which is basically a safeguard for your ears, shielding you from huge spikes in loudness. Let's have that on. There is also an EQ option. Great. And the focus mode. Putting it on will allow you to mix two mono inputs instead of just having them left or right. And this is the pan or balancing option. Here you can shift the balance of your inputs. With focus mode off, we can shift the sound to the left or right, like this. You hear me? Right? And with focus mode on, I could emphasize or lower each of the inputs to be more in the foreground or more in the background. And finally, I can set the frequency manually if need be. Well then, let's have a look at the transmitter. Let's screw on the antenna over here, like this. Fine. Okay, on the back we have two XLR or jack combo inputs over here, and here we have power. Let's power it on. Here we go. As mentioned, the interface is really minimalistic and simple, but houses some advanced features. Let's see this in the menu. Here we click through the main options. We have audio, we have frequency presets, and third, we have tune for manual frequency settings. Let's stick with audio. Right, we can choose dual input or mono mode. This is a typical in-ear monitoring thing. Let me quickly explain. Mono will put one input on both channels. With stereo, you can manage two inputs. You can have them mixed, we call it focus mode on, or one on the left and one on the right, which is focus mode off. In most scenarios, you might want to use dual input setups. This way, and with a mixing console, you can combine two or more inputs and pre-mix them. And every linked receiver can balance these two signals to their liking individually. And of course, if you add another transmitter, more options for your monitor mixes become available. And yes, this is very open to a step-by-step -step approach. Let's hop back to our transmitter menu. Okay, besides mono and dual, we can configure gain. This helps to deal with different levels of input signals, like a keyboard or a vocal. Then we hop to preset, which adjusts the standard frequency configurations. Using these saves you from issues like frequency interference. For most setups, you'll always find a good spot with these. See, you can scroll through the banks here and choose one of eight channels in each. Rule of thumb, always stick with one bank for your team and never use the same channel twice on other transmitters, 
unless you love absolute confusion. Oh, and talking about confusion, how can you assure that your channel is actually free to use? I have a tip for you. Firstly, when you check frequencies and your transmitter is powered on, it's already blocking a channel. So, before checking channels, always turn transmitters off so we have all our own signals out of the frequency range. Now grab your receiver. Yes, you can use your receiver to scan for free frequencies. Serious warning, never forget to unplug your in-ears while you do this. The random mashup you find can hurt your ears, so please really take off your headphones while you test frequencies. Okay, we'll use the RF and AF indicator bars here on the top to check frequencies. You can see we're getting signal peaks on this channel. This means it's already busy. So if you see just one faint bar on RF or AF, always consider that channel is taken. Let's hop on. We push set. Okay. Now we could choose a different bank of presets. Another push, and we can change the channel in that bank. Okay, this channel is busy as well. Next one. Ah, see? Here we have no bars in the RF or AF field. That is perfect. This channel is free. No signal, no stress. Last step. Now we set the same bank and channel on our transmitter, and we're done. Word of advice, make this scan a routine each and every time before your gig or rehearsal. Make sure your frequency has not been occupied by someone or something in the meantime. Oh, and if you want to sync more receivers with the same channel setup, you can use the sync function on your transmitter. For this, I open the receiver. We have this infrared sensor here for syncing. I press sync on the transmitter. Hold it in front of it with a maximum distance of 10 centimeters or four inches and it's synced. Done. See, and there we have our lovely green light. And yes, we could add additional receivers to this transmitter by syncing them like we just did. Well then, we're ready to go. Next sessions will cover solo and multiple setups and mixing options that you can use depending on your band or tech demands. See you there.